It's Sunday night. Hey, what a great and crazy week I've had this week. And you now it's my Sunday routine is, of course, to review the week and then to plan out what's next for this upcoming week. And uh, it's been a great uh, week. You know, one of the highlights of the week early on in the week was uh, my hero, Dale Pollock, had sort of this, um, this webinar on automotive news. And uh, it was a, a little bit of a mea culpa. You know, Dale is talking to us about changing our in investment strategy on used cars and really looking at um, an investment-minded view of vehicle management. I think that's a, a great uh, concept. And he used the analogy of bananas and talking about what bananas would you buy? Would you buy you know, ripe bananas or would you buy uh, bananas that are you know, really black? Which bananas do you want to have in your inventory? He went on to talk to us about the fact that for the longest time, we've actually been selling quickly for a low profit some of the cars that we should have held on to. And in fact, holding on to the black bananas a little bit longer than we should. And it's really an interesting thing to see my hero now sort of have a roundabout turnaround in the way that uh, we do business. And I think, you know, it's wonderful that Dale has been able to, uh, to evolve and to move us in a different direction. I think a lot of dealers are using used cars to uh, have a race to the bottom. And then later on in the week, I had um, a, a sort of a consistent theme of some of the people that have been looking to talk to me. I had a, a couple of interviews this week. One was with Automotive News and another was with uh, uh, Launch Street. And both of those were talking about the uh, uh, impact of artificial intelligence, the disruption that they feel is coming, and what do I think about that? And um, <clears throat> The reality is some of these forces are absolutely out there and are absolutely going to be uh, factors going forward. But I think it's just been a little bit too much negative uh, news out there. And I think I like to be a contrarian and move in the opposite direction. And I think when everybody was talking about how great things were, I was warning uh, my, my team about you know, perhaps being prepared for a little bit of a different uh, direction. I come to the realization that many of the people that are in management today were not in management 10 years ago during the last downturn. And very few, if any, uh, have been around during high interest rate periods. You know, the uh, average interest rate for the history of our business, prime rate's been about four and a half, five percent Right now, I think we've moved up to 2%, and we're already seeing the impact of that. And in fact, uh, for every one point that interest rates rise up, I'm, I'm told that uh, dealer profitability drops by 18%. And we're sort of seeing some of that now. We've um, Many of us have become sloppy in the amount of inventory that we carry, and that sloppiness right now is coming home to buy this in the backside as the interest rates go from one to 2%, we're realizing that's not a 1% increase in the interest rates, but it's really a doubling of the interest charges. And you know, wait, there's more good news. As interest rates go up, uh, consumer demand tends to drop down. But, but you know, <clears throat> looking at this data, it's not, it's not all bad. If you look at uh, the current market right now, uh, ASAR is uh, still looking at being over 17 million this year. Um, incentives are at a low uh, compared to recent times. The average transaction price is actually higher than it's been. Inventories are being managed better by the majority of, of the larger dealers. So I think there's a lot of good news um, in, baked into that. And I think if we keep talking ourselves into this recession, we're gonna have a recession that's self-inflicted. And so I, I'm suggesting to, to our team that we start <clears throat> really working on the basics, getting really brilliant on the basics, going back and, and keeping our attitudes adjusted the right way to really start pushing into this. Because as some dealers are contracting, I think that gives us a great opportunity to expand. Um, last week, I, I was looking at some notes from when I was a kid. And one of my heroes when I was a kid was this guy named Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I know Arnold's not perfect, but let me tell you my experience with Arnold Schwarzenegger. As a 14-year-old boy, um, I was reading a book called Education of a Bodybuilder by Arnold Schwarzenegger. In that book, he talked about everything he was going to do. Uh, he was going to come to America. He was going to be the biggest bodybuilder ever. He was going to um, become an actor in Hollywood, and he was going to be the biggest actor that Hollywood had ever seen. I, I don't know if you ever saw <clears throat> his first movie. His first movie was a movie called Stay Hungry, and he had one line, that one line in that movie, it was, you have to stay hungry, as he's doing barbell curls. And from that humble beginning, he became one of the largest Hollywood 
uh, actors, and not in terms of his physical size, but in terms of his ability to demand and command huge wages. Uh, I, I thought it was really a, a great thing to reread these notes uh, from many years ago, saying, you know, wasn't it interesting to see the man set his mind to something and then go, uh, go about and doing it? And also in that book, he wasn't even in America at that time. He wrote that he was going to be um, part of the political process in the United States, that he wanted to get into politics. He, he loved America. He thought the concept that we have of this freedom and all the opportunities was so great that he wanted to be a part of that. And uh, in fact, he did. He started out, I believe, with uh, President George Bush, uh, the, the president that recently passed. He was on his, I think, his Committee for uh, Physical Fitness. And then later, of course, he became uh, the governor, the governor of the state of California. And I think that's him. What an incredible journey for this young man from Austria to come over to the country. And <clears throat> when I looked at uh, my notes, I also saw uh, notes from his commencement speech and where he said, you know, he's got these five rules or six rules uh, for being effective. And I looked at the rules and the rules are really great. You know, he said, you have to trust yourself and your own uh, instincts. And, you know, I think many of us forget that. We're reading all these books and we're reading books about different people. And you know, David Goggins in his recent book tells you, read your own book. Read your own book and be honest with yourself about your book. You are the best you that ever existed. Now, I asked uh, Tim Grover to send a message to my son <clears throat> last year for his birthday, and he recorded a, a quick 30-second video. He said, Tarquin, you're the best Tarquin Benstock that ever existed. Believe in yourself and be the best Tarquin that you could be. And I thought, what an incredible message. And that message really hit home to my son because you know, I think my son... Uh, is struggling, you know, at that age of 15 at the time, who, who does he want to be? Does he want to be like his dad? Does he want to be like you know, an actor? Does he want to be like a sports hero? Uh, and, and, and thankfully, he's come to the conclusion he wants to be like himself, and he wants to be the best version of himself that he can be. Um, <clears throat> rule number two, I'm, I'm very familiar with. It's, you know, break the rules. and Careful, not break the law, but break the rules. You know, I think a lot of the rules that are set up by people uh, and those rules are good to keep society and, and businesses organized, but really to look at, at doing things in a non-conventional way, see things the way that other people might not see them. And, you know, we, we've had a history of doing that at, at Paragon, that's uh, not breaking the rules, but really doing things uh, in a different way. We, we, we don't compete, we create. I don't want to uh, have competition. I want to dominate com the competition. And to dominate, you've got to be omnipresent and do things that they won't do. So, you know, break the rules, bend the rules, push the rules, push the envelope, see where you can take this. And again, that's not to be confused with breaking the law or doing anything, anything unethical, but really pushing up on the convention. Take the deal, make the deal, make another deal, go after the deal, work a little bit harder, work outside the box, work outside the normal hours, pick up the cars from the customer's house, deliver the cars to them, don't wait for the customers to come to you. Break the conventional rules and really push up on the edge of where you can be. Uh, <clears throat> his, his, his third rule uh, takes a lot of us a lot of time to get uh, used to. It's um, don't be afraid to fail. And, uh, you know, so many of us, you know, what would you do, they say, if you knew you couldn't fail? And you sure as heck do a lot more than what we're doing now. So many of us are afraid of making mistakes. I make mistakes every day. And, and in fact, uh, you know, I, I think I'm successful because I have a few more victories than I have losses. But you've got to have the losses. The losses are what make you appreciate the victories. And if you're only shooting for victories, if you make no mistakes, if you don't occasionally have a bad hire, if you don't occasionally make a deal that you shouldn't make, then you're not, you're not pushing the envelope hard enough. You, you, you've got to break uh, some of the rules. You've got to make some mistakes. And, and, and you've also got to be uh, person enough to own up to those mistakes when, when you do make them. Um, uh, next is... <clears throat> don't listen to the naysayers. You know, I, I, or, you know, naysayers, Schwarzenegger calls them, or haters. There's usually never a hater that's doing better than you. Usually it's the people that aren't doing as well as you. That they say, oh, I don't like the way you manage. I think you're too rough. I think you're too tough. Hey, you know, there's a lot of places you can work. Uh, it's my job to try and get the best out of the people that I can. And it's really rewarding to me uh, to hear from some of the alumni that used to work for us and say, Hey, thank you. Thank you for pushing me. You know, that push made me better. And in fact, some of them said, you should have pushed me harder. I could take it. I learned that I could take it. And I've got some, some great members of our alumni that are successful automobile dealers all over the country. 
And it's really rewarding for them to say, hey, thank you for that. Most recently on Saturday, we had uh, a, former, a former alumni, Jason Graciano, address uh, our team. And I thought it was really wonderful of him to come back uh, for, for no charge and to speak to our sales team about his experience when he was at Paragon. And it's very meaningful when a, a person that started out in the car business at Paragon is able to say, hey, look, I did it, you can do it. I, if I can do it, we can do it. If I can do it, you can do it too. And here's what I did. And he talked about his struggle uh, uh, when he worked at the dealership, his struggle with the other managers at the dealership as he was ascending, trying to keep him down. And, and, and he reminded the group there that I, I, I had his back. Uh, you know, and, and the man or the woman that's pushing, I know they're going to get pushed back from the other people. There, there are going to be other salespeople or other managers saying, slow down, slow down. Why? Because the naysayers, you're making them look bad as you're bumping up on success. And, and some people will try and hold you back. Some people will say those catch lines are, you're working too much. You've got to enjoy your life. You've got to spend more time enjoying your life. I got to tell you, guys, if I could do it again, I'd work even harder in the younger years. The younger years, you can't get back. Those are the years where your rocket ship is breaking out of the gravity. Those are the years that uh, you need to have your thrusters on and your eyes focused on going through the, through the clouds. And then later on in life, hopefully, you'll be able to rest under the uh, tree that you planted in those younger years and be able to eat the fruits from the tree that you planted many years ago. The challenge is many of the younger people today, they want to eat the fruit, they don't want to do the work. And, and then when it comes time later on in life, you know, I think they're going to realize that you, you're going to pay that price. The next rule is a, is a rule that uh, I learned from incredible mentors that I've had around me. You've got to work your butt off. You've got to work your ass off. There are no 40-hour work weeks to become a multi-millionaire successful person. And no, money is not the only measurement, but it is a measurement. And it's pretty important in a capitalist society that you adjust your value system to the society that you're in. If you, if you want to have a, a, a value system that's based on something else, perhaps this isn't the right country for you. But, but in a capitalist society, in order to make it, uh, the measure of, of success and money is an important measure. And again, it's not more important than family. It's not important, more important than your relationship with God if you believe in God. But it is an important measurement. And too many people uh, aren't spending the time right now assessing where they are and where they need to be as they move forward uh, in, in life. As I get older now, I start realizing, my gosh, am I prepared for all the the uh, Expenses are going to come as I get older, as medical costs rise, and as you know, you know arguably my health uh, expenses uh, continue to, to rise. Um, next would be uh, to make sure that you show up. It's the hardest part of the job for most of us is showing up, showing up on time, and putting in a full day, and, and asking yourself, how do I get better at this craft? Can you imagine if you dedicated four or five hours a day to getting better at your craft? I mean, there'd be no stopping you. I, I, uh, there's a, a salesperson, Ali, uh, that is the world champion. Now he beats uh, my friend Joe Girard. He, he sold 1,500 cars. And that should keep you up at night saying, if he can do it, how did he do it? And the really great thing about Ali and about many successful people is they'll share their story with you. I think a lot of people don't want to ask the story because it's going to, it's, the story is going to be that he's putting in the time and he's putting in the work and perhaps the salespeople aren't willing to make that commitment. I think today a competent automobile salesperson can make between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars depending on uh, their effort. They work, if they work a little harder, they can make even more than that. I think the technology and, and the cell, cell phone, this is the most incredible prospecting tool ever invented. And you can use the cell phone to communicate with massive amounts of customers for, for next to zero cost. You can send video to customers. Folks, we're living in the greatest time that ever existed. And as I'm planning out my week this week, I know I've had several major meetings with some really uh, key people. And a lot of those meetings are around data, understanding data, understanding how to reach people, understanding the new technology that's out there. Uh, the Google, Google just came out with this new Google Home Pod, and it's now taking voice technology and taking voice technology and combining that with video. Good night, Google. Hey, Google, good night. In no net tomorrow, it'll be sunny with a high of 38 and a low of 27. What time should I set the alarm for? 4.30. 
Done. Your alarm set for tomorrow at 4.30 a.m. Good night, boss. Good night, Google. Good night.